Have you ever asked yourself why we study plant hormones? After all, we're not plants. Well, there's a reason. This is Vignesh from BioWorld. And I'm going to tell you why in the past few videos, we've been learning about hormones like auxin, cytokinin, gibberellin, abscisic acid, and ethane. One reason is, of course, because it's part of our syllabus. But there is a bigger reason. The reason is that one day you all will become scientists, research and development officers. And the more we understand about the plants, the more we will learn how to apply it in agriculture. So here in our syllabus, you need to outline the application of plant growth regulators. Plant growth regulators are plant hormones or phytohormones. Okay, we only cover three, that is synthetic auxin, synthetic gibberellin, and synthetic ethylene, or what we also call as ethane. Now, you may wonder also, why is it we use something that is synthetic? Synthetic means artificial. Why can't we just use the auxin, gibberellin, and ethane directly extracted from the plant? Let me explain to you. Synthetic products have benefits that natural products lack. Firstly, if we want to extract hormone from a plant, we would probably have to kill the plant. Secondly, the amount that we can collect from the plant will not be enough for industrial purposes. So that is why we choose synthetic versions of this hormones since we know their molecular structure. If I list down the reasons, the first reason is, as I mentioned, since we know the molecular structure of these hormones, we can very easily synthesize them in large amounts. Secondly, because we are synthesizing and not killing the plant, it is going to be cheaper. Because if we are going to extract from the plant, we need a plantation, we need to fertilize the plant, we need to grow the plant up to maturity to be able to extract. And then we only can get the hormone once from that one plant. When we want a new batch of hormone, we have to grow another new set of plants. But by having a factory that synthesizes these hormones, it will give us large volumes and at a lower price, which is more affordable for agriculture use. Third benefit is when we want to apply it directly to the plant, we can use high concentrations of these hormones so that we get the plant to develop faster. Because if the plant itself is synthesizing, it will synthesize limited amounts suitable for necessary growth but we want excessive growth for agriculture needs so that's why by having synthetic hormones we can make use of higher concentrations and finally you see because we are creating these hormones the plants themselves do not have enzymes to break down hormone remember in a biological system, all chemicals that we produce, neurotransmitters or hormones or even enzymes, when we do not need them, they are broken down. But now when we use a synthetic hormone, the plant will not have the enzyme to break it down. So this hormone will stay for long periods of time in the plant. So the farmer or the agriculture specialist will not have to keep giving the hormone to the plant. So all in all, you see, use of synthetic hormones will help to make the plant more physiologically active. It will grow more intensively. It will flower more and it will fruit more. So now let's look at the role of each one of the synthetic hormones. 
I'll start with synthetic auxin, which is also known as 2,4-D. D stands for dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. It is used for four factors. One as a weed killer. Two as a rooting hormone. Three for fruiting. And four for potato storage. Let me explain each one. We can use synthetic auxin as a weed killer instead of chemicals because chemicals have had certain problems, some of which are, firstly, it is not specific. So the chemicals end up killing the crops that we want as well as the weeds that we don't want. Two, the chemicals can be absorbed into the soil and soil water and in doing so, contaminate and lead to pollution. Thirdly, it can also be toxic to human and animals. So, the use of synthetic auxin is a suitable alternative because Synthetic auxins are specific to dicotyledonous weeds. So, if we are planting a monocotyledon plant, for example, paddy, corn, or even grass, okay, the lawn here is grass for maybe a golf course. Okay, so, when these pest plants grow, it is very convenient or easy to use synthetic auxin and spray on those weeds so the synthetic auxin will only destroy the weed and not the plants. And even if we are worried of contamination, the synthetic auxin is organic in the sense it is made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, it is very safe to the system. Next, we see the role of synthetic auxin as a rooting hormone. This is most suitable for stem cutting techniques. Some plants are not planted using seed. Some of them are planted using stem cutting. So when we cut a stem, it will have no root. And if we plant that stem into the soil, the chances for survival of the stem is minimized. But by using auxin on the stem, we find it will promote rooting as in this picture. You can see tiny, tiny roots forming. So then when we plant them in the soil, chances for survival of the plant is very high. Third, we see the role of synthetic auxin in fruiting. Now, we already know auxin is necessary for partenocarpi. That is, by spraying auxin onto a flower, we kill the flower where the petals fall off, but the ovary of the flower is stimulated to develop into a seedless fruit. So, we find that the synthetic auxin not only helps in creating these seedless fruits, but at the same time, if you remember, one of the function of auxin is to inhibit abscission. So, by spraying trees with auxin, it will prevent premature fruit dropping. So, the fruits that have formed will not fall off from the tree quickly. The role of auxin is to inhibit potato sprouting. So when we want to store potatoes for export purposes and all, we don't want it suddenly to grow up these sprouts. So when we spray auxin, we are preventing the potatoes from aging. So that way, these sprouts will not damage the potatoes. So now, let's move on to synthetic gibberellin. Synthetic gibberellin is used in three industries. Firstly, for fruiting. Secondly, in the brewing industry. And thirdly, in farming. 
Now, fruiting is going to be safe like in auxin, where it is involved in parthenocarpy as well as preventing premature fruit dropping. Because remember, gibberellin has the same characteristics like auxin here in keeping the plant young. Now, brewing industry is specific to gibberellin, so I will be explaining it in detail. And farming is a special case, which I will explain to you after this. The picture you see here is the fermentation tank in the brewing industry. This picture here is how the tanks used to look originally. Now, this has become modernized. But either way, what will be inside these containers are a mix of oats, barley, uh, yeast and also synthetic gibberellin. Okay, this is the modern way of course. Ancient days, they did not have synthetic gibberellin. But now, to make the brewing faster, we add synthetic gibberellin. Now, how gibberellin helps is related to gibberellin's role in seed germination. During seed germination, gibberellin will actually stimulate the production of the enzyme amylase. So, when we add gibberellin into this mixture here, it will stimulate the oats to start synthesizing amylase. Amylase, as usual, will break down starch into glucose. So the yeast that is also added into the mixture will be able to use glucose to carry out fermentation. The fermentation of the glucose is what will make the mixture sour and that is sold as beer. And now I'll talk about synthetic gibberellin where I put an extract. How is it used in farming? Actually, it is not synthetic gibberellin that we are using in farming. We are using something called an anti-gibberellin. That means it is a chemical synthesized to work against the natural gibberellin of plants. The anti-gibberellin will make the plant become shorter, greener, and have greater resistance to infection. This, of course, is a, the greater resistance is a coincidence. The main objective of using an anti-gibberellin was to prevent gibberellin from promoting hyper elongation. So that way what happens is the pl plants become very short and this is an advantage because now the plants will take up less space to grow. So in a plantation, you can plant more of these plants and get more yield per acre of plantation. So this is also another way of how gibberellin has been used in farming. We see ethane next. Synthetic ethane is used in fruiting and flowering industries. Okay, but for ethane, the fruiting is not involving parthenocarpy. It is related to ripening of the fruits artificially. And for flowering is of course to induce flowering. The advantage of this roles of ethane is mainly for the export industry. This is how fruits and flowers are exported. They are packed while they are still unripe or instead of packing flowers, they only pack the flower buds because if they were going to pack the fruits as they ripe, or the flower as it has bloomed, by the time it reaches the consumer, this is what it would look like. So that's why the unripe fruits and the flower buds are harvested, they are taken from the plantations and exported. So upon arrival, the consumer will initially receive unripe fruits and flower buds. Then what they do is they will spray the synthetic ethane 
onto the unripe fruit and flower buds so that they are fresh for receiving by the consumer. Another advantage is that all the fruits will ripe at the same time and all the flowers will also bloom at the same time. So you get a uniform set of fruits and a uniform set of flowers for use. So this is how our knowledge on the hormones are used in agriculture. That I have come to the end of our discussion on plant hormones. I'll see you in my next video to explain how flowering happens via photoperiodism. Until then, bye-bye.